I'm joined here now on the now familiar Zoom screen by Claire Burrows, who is one of the people in the world that I admire the most. I just love watching her work and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, so hi, Claire. How are you doing, Lisa? Lovely to be here. Great. Uh, so Claire's a reflexologist and nutrition coach at nowbaby.ie. Uh, she has an unparalleled level of advanced training in the areas of fertility and childbirth. Um, what Claire actually does is that she brings babies into the world who, without her intervention, might not make it to the families that are ready to greet them and can't wait to love them. So Claire and I have worked together on uh, and collaborated on small and large projects alike since 2015. Can you believe it's that long? Um, so I'm delighted to have this window of time in your diary, Claire. Um, because I know it's a busy diary, to have a chat about your work, because I really believe that there are people out there uh, who need to hear about it. And I say this with personal confidence because there was a gap of almost four years between um, my children, who are 20 and 17 now, um, including a miscarriage between them, and long stretches where we thought that, uh, that it was just going to be the one. Um, uh, and if I had known you then, I would have been sitting in front of you for sure, hoovering up all your wisdom and, uh, and all your evidence-based advice. So I can truly appreciate the absolute joy behind those baby photos that you post of those very precious and wanted little humans. And I always read, read with interest and with the background I have of being a midwife, um, the stories, which are anonymized, of course, um, but that give the details uh, that many couples can relate to in terms of fertility challenges, IVF, and all the rest of it. So for those watching, if you aren't already following Claire, I'll put the links with this video so you can coo over those photo albums for yourself. Um, so Claire, how many are there now? How many babies are there whose middle name is Claire, whether they're boys or girls? <laughs> uh, Lisa, I'm, firstly, I'm sorry for your loss. I actually didn't know that. Um, I, you know, and I know that, you know, there's so many pregnancies are lost, but um, you know, it is important to acknowledge every single one of them. Um, so even though it's a long time ago, I, I am sorry. Uh, the babies, and I have 20 of them here on the wall behind me. Um, there's nearly 500. Is there 500 now? Yeah, near My enough. Goodness. Yeah. My yeah. goodness. Um, and, you know, every single one of them um, I'm invested in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it like it's an absolute labor of love for me. Um, I couldn't begin to tell you how much I love my job, yeah. um, but I am very results driven. Um, yeah. So once I sit down with a couple to work with them, I want to go at it till it's done. Um, so, yeah, 500 um, or thereabouts um, and looking forward to starting another year and a few hundred more, hopefully. A few hundred more, absolutely. Wow, that's just so amazing. What led you into this line of work, Claire? Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a lovely story, actually, in itself. Um, I used to be a project manager in IT, in financial services. Um, so IT people are just solutions orientated. Um, they like solving problems. And... Um, Whereas I had my baby, no difficulty whatsoever. Um, my sister was 10 years trying for baby. So she's five years younger than me. And for 10 years, um, she was herself and her husband were trying for a baby. Um, during that time, she had six losses. Um, wow. And in fairness, that's even a small number of losses for a 10 year period. Um, so they were really struggling. Um, and her last, her sixth loss was on euro change overnight um, at the end of 2001 um, so I was working on that project and um, once it was finished I thought we need to solve your problem um, so I went I did a little bit of research and pointed her in the right direction on a few things did some kind of energy healing work with her um, and so that was January of 2002 and on the 22nd of December 2002 baby Connor was born and when I tell you that obviously it was a huge 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 deal and um, for my sister and her husband but I had a little 12 year old girl at home who had no cousins 
And she was over the moon, over, over, over the moon. So baby Connor came home from hospital on Christmas Day. And it was the biggest celebration. You just have no idea. This little 12 year old girl was just thrilled to have a new baby in the family. Um, and his little sister then arrived um, with some more intervention for me um, three years later. Um, so Eva was born um, in 2000 and whatever, five. Um, so my sister's friends had fertility problems. I started working with them. And the more I worked, the more I studied, the more I researched. Um, and yeah, it just took it from there. Oh, fantastic. I have goosebumps. I did not know that story about him coming home on Christmas Day. Wow. What what a gift and what a time of the year for that to happen. It's just amazing. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So actually, we all talk about the big pivot that we did in 2020, but you already did. That was a huge pivot, you know, to move from working in IT on big projects, you know, with lots of deadlines that impact a lot of people like Euro Changeover. You mentioned that and I, it all came flooding back to me, all that was happening around that time uh, to sort of working more in lines of one a focus on one couple at one time. That's a big project for them, of course, but it's it's a different style of work. Uh, so what uh, what skills and transferable, what were the most useful transferable skills that you brought from from your previous line of work into what you're doing now, do you think? Well, for sure, communication. Yeah. Um, you'd hear it all the time from couples because I'm always listening to couples. And I obviously work in a space where I'm only working with couples who have fertility difficulties. So I hear the same story over and over again. Now, they've, they're on their individual journey, um, but a lot of them are very, very similar. And um, they feel alone. They feel isolated, they feel shamed, um, and they feel unable to talk about their struggles. Um, so listening and communication um, are just so important and giving them hope, um, giving them hope and talking to them about the baby that they haven't got yet. Um, it's not a procedure, it's not a process, it's not a medication, it's a baby. Yeah. Um, so opening up a conversation around what they really want, which is the baby, not the procedure. Yeah. So that's the first thing, this communication skills. Um, I love studying. Um, I'm always studying. Um, so, yeah, if there's so something I can go and check out and look up and bring to the table, um, I'll do that. But methodology, too. Um, IT is a very methodological um, type of process so there's a beginning there's a middle and there's an end and for me that just makes complete logical sense um, you start off wanting to have a baby um, and then the middle part is how to make a baby which really nature um, does perfectly about one in six couples have difficulty getting pregnant so five out of six couples get pregnant naturally so nature is the supreme architect of uh, making babies. So what I've done is taken how nature makes babies and packaged it up over a three month window because that's how long it takes for egg and sperm to mature. So when people think perhaps that they have tried and failed in a month and a month cycle, that's not actually the case. So every egg and every sperm takes three months to mature. So working with a couple over that three month window and putting in all of the things that nature needs and taking out all of the things that might be stealing the things that nature needs. Um, and then there you go, the job is done um, for most people. So, so that methodology, professional women really, really appreciate that kind of straightforward what are we doing? Where are we going? What's going to happen? Um, and can wrap their head around it. So they're definitely, you know, project management skills. Yeah. Um, but the end result is, you know, beyond anything you'd ever deliver in an IT environment. Absolutely. It's the best. I, I love that line, to making sure that they're not exposing themselves or taking in anything that steals what nature needs for that to work. That's a lovely yeah, and that, that happens a lot. Um, people yeah. don't realise 
that simple thing like the lining of a takeaway coffee cup has endocrine disruptors in it. Um, so there are little things that we do every day and they all add up. Um, so I've done all the research, I've done all the legwork um, and I've put it all together so that the couples can just work through the process and get their much long for baby. Absolutely. And, you know, it's something that I, I, I think I've said to you several times and I often say to clients is that who, who provide service, you know, professional services is that what the client is getting in an hour, an hour and a half of your time took years, you know, to accumulate and and uh, and put all that together. Um, so you mentioned three a three month program, and in in an era when everybody we order online, we expect the email immediately to come. Yes, your order's been received; it's already on the way. Sure, is it not on your doorstep yet? Um, how do you keep couples motivated for that length of time? Because there's always an initial motivation, but it's the it's the what's the word the commitment you know that that is required to get to the the end result. So what what do you do to keep them motivated for that length of time and committed? Yeah, for sure. Um, they're mostly excited at the beginning. Um, and once they bed down the lifestyle and the nutrition habits, um, it's a bit like winter. Um, it feels like nothing's happening um, until springtime comes and the daffodils pop their heads up. Okay. Um, so there is that kind of winter stretch. Um, and I have a story and it's an absolutely true story. Um, but I, I wheel it out for a lot of my clients when they're in that space where they're maybe losing hope or they're feeling like nothing's happening, but they're still moving along with the program. So my daughter is a sports scientist and she was doing a PhD, which required her to work with the Olympic team. So she traveled to Rio for um, the Olympics. Um, and for about six months before that, she um, was with the whole Irish Olympic team and she was coming home every day really excited about what she was doing and really enthusiastic about her work um, and she was working with the most elite athletes on the planet um, and she was telling me about how much they'd sacrificed yeah. for um, a place on the team um, and just because they were on the team didn't mean that they were necessarily going to compete but they were on the team um, how much they sacrificed um, what they ate what they drank, when they slept was all about performance, all of it. And she was absolutely in awe of the level of commitment um, that these guys were putting into their goal of achieving an Olympic gold. And she came home one day and she said, Mom, your job for motivating people is easier than mine. And I was like, what? <laughs> and she said, for all the effort and commitment and training that the Olympic team put in, only one of them gets the prize. But she said, for the couples that you work with, they put in the work, they make the commitment, they get the prize, nobody else can have their baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nobody else can have their baby. Yeah. So obviously for a lot of couples, they're looking at other people maybe with terrible lifestyles um, or their friends and their family and they go, when is it going to be my turn? Mm. Nobody else can have your baby. And that's really how it is that I keep people focused because their baby is waiting. Yes. Their baby is waiting. No one else. I love that. I love that. It's worth repeating. It is worth sure. repeating. For sure. For sure. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, so in terms of leadership, when you were in the bank, you were having to lead in a different way. And now you are leading clients through their fertility journeys, uh, through challenges. You're leading them into new lifestyles. Some For some of them, you're leading them into parenthood for the first time. Um, so what do you do to look after yourself? That self-leadership piece that, frankly, I don't think gets to enough attention. Um, but I know you practice it. So I know that other leaders who are watching this will benefit from hearing what you do to mind yourself. Yeah, that's a really, really valid point, Lisa. It's, it's probably something I had to learn on the go. Um, there was a stage probably when I was overworked um, and really wasn't giving my clients the level of attention that um, I could have. So I, I have really cut that back. Um, so 
I suppose the first thing I do is I follow my own nutrition advice. Um, and that's really important. If you're asking people to do something, you need to be able to say that you're following the, the same type of thing that you're, you're committing to it. So I follow my own nutrition advice. I think that eating regularly, sleeping regularly, that all for sure, that that's all part of the overall self-care. Mm -hmm. But for me, you know, having you coaching me, Lisa, has been, and I was only reflecting on it the other day, that when we started working together in 2015, that was now baby's first six-figure year. Our first one. Um, and, you know, upscaling business is, um, it's not as easy as, as it looks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's not as easy, but when you have the right type of support, you the right people whispering in your ear and pushing you forward, um, it's easy. It gets easier and easier and easier. So having somebody like yourself who is by my side or behind the scenes um, talking me through stuff, um, giving me a sounding board um, and, you know, understanding my motivation um, understanding the level I want to deliver my services at and supporting me to be the best version of myself. That is a huge part of how any small business um, gets to do what I do. Fantastic. And thank you for that. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a joy. It's, it's a joy from my end uh, to watch you over the years, um, you know, developing your practice and developing your business, you know, as a business, but, but the practice of what you do as well. Um, and you mentioned that you read a lot and you're always upskilling. That's an understatement. Um, every time that I talk to you, you've, you're taking on or completing a new course. It's not that you start loads and don't finish them. You complete every single one of them. And I know for sure um, from even chatting to your clients that that you bring all of that to them immediately. It's It just comes to you and then it goes to them immediately for their benefit, which is just fantastic. Uh, so it's my pleasure to have worked with you all these years and uh, looking forward to the, the years ahead. Um, so Claire, for anyone who wants to get in touch with you, uh, what is the best way for them to do that? Okay, so I made it simple. Baby at nowbaby.ie. Um, I'm really looking forward to 2022 um, based on the two, maybe three courses I've done in the last um, 12 months. Um, I recognize that there are a lot of clients who are already on the IVF route. Um, and there's very little support around IVF um, in terms of additional um, resources. So, what I've done is found research that identified that the Mediterranean diet on its own, just the Mediterranean diet will improve IVF outcome by 40%. 40, 4-0. 40, 40, 40%, wow. Um, so it was a Dutch study. It's an old study. It's from back from 2009, I think, but it still isn't being um, recommended by the IVF clinics. So I have made a program specifically for clients who are going to do IVF. Um, and it's a preparation program. So it is to help them. The success rate is around 36% um, for IVF unless the mother is over 40 and then it drops down to about 5%. Mm -hmm. So the success rates for a 5,000 euro investment um, could be better. Um, and the IVF preparation program is what Now Baby will be offering um, to those couples um, starting in January. So baby at nowbaby.ie baby at nowbaby.ie. I will put that in the comments as well uh, for anyone who wants to contact you. Um, for those watching, I would, if, if this is of interest to you, please contact Claire. Um, I, you know, I can't recommend her highly enough uh, for, and I know that she operates with full, in, you know, full integrity and professionalism and, uh, and care and compassion underpinning all of that. So it's just a wonderful a wonderful space to be in if you're in that space of having challenges. Claire will support you. As you mentioned, Claire, I mean, none of us can do can do any of these journeys on our own. So we need a team and get the team behind you. So Claire is your team. Uh, so Claire, thank you again very, very much for time in your, I know, really busy diary. I really appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks, Lisa.